Okay, I, I, I was playing uh, rock and roll in those days, and I did a gig at a place in Liverpool called Fingal's Cave, which went on later to become The Cavern, which is, of course, where the Beatles started out. And I was there that night with a, a gospel singer from America, Sister Rosetta Tharp, and she said, oh, there's somebody in town that you have to meet. And I said, who's that? And she said, Bill Broomsley. And I had no idea who she was talking about. And I said, is he a musician? She said, oh, yeah, he plays the guitar. So I said, does, um, does he play rock and roll? And she said, no, no, no. He, he played the acoustic guitar, the Spanish guitar. And I thought, oh, my God, is he going to say... They're just not interested in that stuff. Uh, but she talked me into going along, and we went to his hotel and went up to his room, and his door was, was sort of half open, so we knocked on the door, and it opened, and a voice said, come in, and we went in, and there was this man sitting on the bed, and he was so black that he did not reflect light. I'd, I'd seen very few black people in my life, you know, and, and this man was totally different. My sister Rosetta Tharp was black, but she was more coffee-colored and she had red hair. This guy was black. And he stood up and he stood up and he stood up and stood up. He was tall, like a, like a, a, a basketball player. And uh, he had this guitar, acoustic guitar, by him on the bed. And and Rosetta said, this is a friend of mine, this is uh, Johnny Pinktoes. And uh, she called me Pinktoes because I, because I was white. And uh, she said, this is Bill Broomsley. And, and it was Bill Brunsey, big Bill Brunsey. And he stood up and he shook my hand. And he, he had a hand, made my hand look like the hand of a kitten. I mean, it, big hand. And he said, you play guitar. And I said, yes. So he said, play me some. And so I tried his guitar, and it was a wonderful sounding guitar. But but the strings were much heavier than I was used to. I, I was used to a, an electric guitar. So I tried playing, and I went... And he said, well, that's very pretty, but that's not playing the guitar. And I said, well, what do you mean? He said, give me the guitar. And he went. And I was mesmerized. I, I'd never heard music like this. I, I was astounded. And I said, that's wonderful, he said. You have to be careful with a guitar because a guitar will will let you play what it wants you to play. You have to make the guitar play what you want it to play. And and I realized then he he used another analogy. He said it's like a horse. You get on a horse. A horse is going to want to take you where it wants to go, whereas uh, you have to make that horse go where you want it to go. You have to dominate the guitar. And boy, Brunzi dominated the guitar. And that moment, I realized that I didn't want to play rock and roll. I didn't want to play any other music. I didn't want to play jazz. I was getting into playing jazz. Didn't want to do that anymore. What I wanted to do was to play blues. And that's what I did. I I went home. I went back to, to Prostatin and I... I sold my electric guitar. I, actually, I sold it before I left. I went to Frank Hess's music store in Liverpool the, the next morning, and I walked in with my Gibson Les Paul gold top, 1952. I wish I still had it. Walked in there, and I said, do you want to buy this? And they said, yes, and they bought it off me. And then I took the money, went back home, and I looked for a Martin guitar, because that's what Brunsey played. I asked him what guitar he played. He said he played a Martin, best kind there was. And uh, I, I, I put an ad in the paper and <laughs> got this reply because at, at that time you couldn't buy 
any American instruments in England. It was not possible. It was sh so shortly after the war that they weren't allowing, there was an embargo on, on stuff com coming in that were not essentials, and Martin guitars were not essentials. So I put an ad in the paper, and this little old lady who ran a, a, a pawnbroker's in Romford, Essex, wrote to me, and she said she had a Martin guitar that was 17 pounds. And I sent off my 17 pounds, and I got this little tiny Martin. And I was surprised. I, I took it out of its case, tuned it up, and started playing it, and it had as big a voice as the one that, that Brunzi played. I, astounding, and I immediately started playing blues. <laughs> 